Hi, this is Bob from Hubby Concepts, and I'm back with part two of my Tamiya Ford Bronco build. Today, I'm going to paint and detail the body, and I'm going to go through the painting steps uh, one step at a time, because painting a Lexan body is a lot different than painting a hard plastic vehicle. So, um, I'll go through the painting, the paint I use, how to put the little accessories on the body and kind of finish up this truck and get it running. Uh, it turned out really nice. I think it looks great. Uh, beautiful truck. So body today and we'll, we'll get this thing finished up and running. Let's get started. Alright, welcome back to part two of my uh, Tamiya Bronco build for novices. Um, this is where we left off. Got the chassis all built and running. And uh, now it's time to do the body work. So the first thing that Tamiya tells us to do is install the body mounts. Now, they're really tall, extra tall. I assume they probably use them in different kits. And they tell you to cut them off at a certain length. Now I have discovered that I don't like to cut them off to start with because I might want my body a little higher than Tamiya thinks or uh, whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and just install them at the full height to start with and then I'll cut them off later. Even if I have to take them back off to cut them, I, I just want to make sure I get them where I want them. So the short mounts bolt up here in the front. There's a little alignment pin. And it just mounts like that. And they use a bolt through here and one of their little nuts on the back. Now, normally I would put Loctite on this, but I'm not going to right now because as I mentioned, I may take them back off later to cut them to the right length. And then the tall ones mount here on the back. I'll go ahead and uh, and mount all these. So I have these mounted and I put the body clips in the fifth hole up. Now on the front they make it quite obvious. On the back they don't really tell you um, but it looks like the fifth hole up and then this frame drops over the top to kind of get everything solid. And then there's an unmarked bag. If you remember the bags are all labeled, but this one is unlabeled, and it has some additional body parts, screws, uh, and some more body clips. There's O-rings, there's a bunch of little parts, and, and we'll use all those on the body, so I'm going to go ahead and put those in my muffin tin. But right now I'm going to grab two of the clips and clip in this brace. And then after the brace is clipped in, they show two more pins, and those are one, two, three, four, five up. So we'll do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five up. And five up on this side. One, two, three, four, five up. Now, obviously this height of this brace is not terribly important because the body's designed to sit on these clips and you can see why I didn't cut them off because I may want to adjust my body uh, later. So now we're going to move on to the body. So let's talk about the body. This is the body. It is a clear Lexan body and it has a protective outer film on it which you peel off after you paint it. And the thing about these bodies is you paint them from the inside. So when you're looking at the paint, you're actually looking at the paint through the clear Lexan. That way when you hit things, you don't scratch it up. It looks very, very nice. These bodies are very tough. Um, and you have to think in reverse to paint it. So we're going to talk about that as we go. Tamiya also has a lot of hard plastic parts, um, molded styrene parts. Um, there's the roof rack um, and the tire carrier and the grill. So the combination makes for a really beautiful body. When it's done, it's hard to tell it's Lexan. So Tamiya has some very good instructions on how to paint it and how to cut it out. There's a few specific tools that I use. One of them is a pair of Lexan scissors with a curved tip. And they're designed to just cut right through the Lexan and the curved tip 
obviously makes it very nice. Now you can see, maybe you can see that I damaged the um, clear protective covering on the outside, which doesn't matter, I'm going to cut this away. But when I actually cut the body out, I'll be very careful and um, cut them out with the scissors. A drill with a small drill bit, to me it gives you a drilling guide right here. And then this is a body reamer. So this is designed to put in the little hole and twist it and it makes the hole bigger and bigger. Now you don't necessarily need this. You can do it with an X-Acto knife or something else, but a, a body reamer does make it a lot easier. So we're going to use the scissors and the body reamer and the drill to drill the holes. Tamiya tells you a, a drilling guide right here, but I don't drill the holes myself until after the body is painted. I don't want any chance of of lifting that protective covering and uh, making my paint job go awry. We flip over here to the next page. They talk about the pieces to cut off before you paint it. And then they show a painting guide. And this shows the black body top and, um, and the, uh, the gray body and the black bumpers. And then we get into, here's where we get into the actual, here's how to paint it. So, the first thing they have you do is wash the body with soap and water. Um, dish soap and water, uh, you have to wash the inside really well and then let it dry. Do you need to do that? Well, I have never tried to paint a body without doing that, so I don't know, but I'm assuming that there's some kind of maybe mold releases or films on here that you want to get out before you paint it. So yes, soap and water, let it dry. Now, we'll talk about paint for a minute. There's two different kinds of paint. Okay, Tamiya makes paints for polycarbonate, and they start with PS. So I'm going to use PS32 Corsa Gray, which is the color that Tamiya used on their um, box art and I just love the color so I'm going with that. PS5 which is a black for the roof and everything and then I'm using a PS55 clear flat um, which goes on the outside after you paint the body to uh, knock down the shine of the black part so we're, we're gonna we'll go through those as we use them. And then on the plastic parts you don't use polycarbonate paint, you use regular paint. Now you can use any kind of spray paint on these plastic parts, but I'm going to be using Tamiya TS-29 Semi-Gloss Black and TS-80. The TS are the plastic paints, flat clear. Now some of these parts I will not even paint, I'll just spray them with clear flat. And that gets rid of that toy-like look of the plastic. Uh, and some of them I will paint with the TS-29. So we're going to use two different kinds of paint. So that's kind of the basics of how it goes. And then they tell you, you know, how to mask everything uh, in the instructions. But we're going to go through that step by step. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my body out using my body scissors. And again, there's a, a nice line in here to follow. And it's just, I find it nice to just cut away to small areas at a time and then get bigger and bigger and then really am careful as I get closer to the edge. And sometimes I'll even sand them to, uh, to get them nice. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this body out. Then after I do that, well, I'll show it to you and then I'm going to wash it with soap and water. The kit comes with some beautiful decals. Um, there's a warning decal sheet for the chassis. Um, some Bronco and Ford logos. Uh, decals for all the windows, tail lights. And then it comes with masking sheet for the windows. I really like these. They're pre-done. You just have to cut them out and put them on the inside to mask off all the windows. Uh, the instructions say to use scissors, but I always use a knife. Um, just works better for me. I can cut right along the lines. And so I am going to cut all these out while my body is drying because I just washed it. 
So um, I'll take this and cut all these decals out. They're already numbered. One thing, I always use a brand new X-Acto knife blade and I always throw my old blades into an old pill bottle so I don't wipe out any people who handle the garbage. So I'll get these cut out and then by then the body should be dry and we'll start masking it. Well, my body's all washed, trimmed. Um, so now it's time to put in these stickers and I've got one already installed here. They just cover all the windows. They don't have to be perfect. Um, the Let's get this one in here and I'll show you. The decals that Tamiya provides have a window frame on the outside, so that'll cover up if you've got a little bit of overlap. And then they have a smoked colored center when you peel these off. This is actually transparent smoke color. I may cut that away on the windshield. Um, I may not. Um, the side windows and rear windows will probably leave smoked, but I'll decide that later. So anyway, now it's just time to put in all these um, all these stickers and cover up all the windows. It's important to note this this area in the front. The sticker covers up the headlight. It does not need to be pressed down into that area. It's just to cover it. When the grill is on, uh, we just want to make sure those stay clear for our headlights. So I'll go ahead and put the rest of these uh, stickers on. Come back. I've got the uh, windows masked off, so now it's time to mask off everything I don't want to be black. So I want the roof to be black and the bumpers to be black. So I'll mask off everything else. Now, Tamiya shows in the instructions the bumper and the roof and the rear bumper. But if I look at the box art, which I really like, the fender flares are black and the rocker panels are black. Now, they provide decals for the fender flares, but I find that those decals are really hard to put on because not only do they go around the fender, but they overlap. So. I'm going to uh, leave those available for black paint also, so I'll mask around here and I'll do the same thing with the rocker panels. So the fender flares, bumper, rocker panels, and top will be black. So I do that by, I use Tamiya masking tape for everything. The stuff does not bleed at all. So what I'll do is I'll mask the edges with Tamiya masking tape. And then I'll use uh, paper and inexpensive masking tape to mask the rest. So on this fender flare, for example, we'll just put some Tamiya masking tape on here. Like this. And that'll be my edge. And I will go all the way around here with Tamiya masking tape and all the way around the top and then I'll, I'll cover everything else. I'll, I'll be back for a couple of times while I'm masking. So what I've done here is masked off all the edges. This is all going to be black around here and black up on the top. So now I just have to use some of this crummy masking tape to just cover up all the rest of the areas. So that's going to take me a little while. Again, I spent about an hour masking and it takes a while, but the better job you do here, the better paint you get. So I will mask off the rest and then we'll paint it. There's the finished masking. So this will be black and the bumpers and the edge will be black. So. 
I'm going to go ahead and spray it with this uh, PS5, and I'll probably do three light coats to get a nice coverage. Uh, once I do that, then I'll come back and show you how the rest operates. So there it is painted black, that's three light coats. And you can see what it looks like on the outside. We've got our black top, black fender flares, and the rest of the body is, uh, is not painted. So now it's time to peel off the masking. I have to do that and be careful not to peel off the masking on the windows or the headlights. So I'll just take some time and, and start peeling away. Now I can peel off every other bit of masking tape though. So let me just peel a little of this off here. window stickers stay down pretty good. Okay, so now you can see that's clear. My window sticker is still there. And so I'm going to go ahead and peel off the rest of this tape. There, we've got the mask all peeled off. So that looks pretty good. Now it's time to spray our color. I'm spraying PS32 Corsa Gray. You don't need to mask off the black. We're going to spray right over it. It won't show because we're looking at the back side of the paint. A little hard to get your head around, uh, but that's how it works. That's why you paint the dark colors first. Now, if you're painting a metallic color, they're very transparent. So if I'm painting metallics, what I do is put a couple of coats on and then let that dry and then back it up with silver because you can see through metallic covers, colors even if you put four or five coats on. So a couple coats of a metallic color and then silver. Uh, I'll probably back my paint up with silver anyway even though this isn't a metallic. Uh, I just like to have that nice silver inside on the body. So I'll go ahead and paint my, uh, my color. A couple coats of that. Starting to look like something. So, uh, yeah, paint's looking real good. I'm going to go ahead and paint some of this uh, PS12 silver over everything just to, as a light block. And uh, once that dries, then we'll peel off the window masking and this outer shell masking. So there's the silver, and now it's time to just peel off all the window masks. And when that happens, we get something like that. Looking pretty good. Off the windshield here. Okay. So I'm going to peel those off, and I'll come back, and we'll do the uh, the body shell. So I started a little corner here, and now we'll just peel this off. minutes but wow amazing how much better it looks with this masking off go. Okay, you can see our clear headlights here, our clear tail lights, all of our, our windows. Um, yeah, that turned out exactly how I wanted. So now I'm going to do the clear flat on the roof. know if I'm going to or not. I'll think about that for a little bit. Let me think about that and I'll come back. Well, I think you can see from the uh, paper that I've decided to go ahead and spray this with clear flat. So I'm going to use this PS55 clear flat and spray it on the outside. So I'll wipe it down good to make sure there's no dust on it. 
and then spray that and let it dry. I'm not going to do the fender flares right now. I like them glossy. I can always decide later if I want to put some clear flat on them. So I'll get this painted and then we'll see how it looks. Wow, that um, clear flat looks way better than I even thought it would. So I'm going to go ahead and do the fender flares and the bumpers and then we'll uh, get some decals on it. So there's my body after uh, the clear flat on the, the rest of it. And what I've done here is I've taken and punched out every single body hole that the uh, drilling instructions tell me. And uh, then I'm going to uh, enlarge them to the right size. They also give you drill bit sizes. I use my taper reamer and just ream them out to the size I want. Um, so I'm going to cut them all to size and then I'll rinse the body off to get rid of any scraps of uh, Lexan plastic and then I'll start putting the decals on. I did test fit the body on those extra tall body mounts to see how it looks and I'm very happy with the ride height and everything so I'm also going to go ahead and cut those off now. So, I'm going to punch out the holes to the right size, rinse off the body, cut these off, and then I'll be back and I'll show you some techniques for the decals. Well, with the body painted, it's time for decals. Mia has an excellent um, page that shows every decal number and where's it, where it goes. I uh, Put a few decals on this side. I did the windows and a couple of the stripes and the tail light, and uh, they go on really well. So my typical uh, thing for the decals is I cut them out with an X-Acto knife, and uh, I suppose you could use scissors too. And then like on this window decal, I line it up on the bottom edge and the back edge. I don't know how good you'll be able to see this, but... Line it up on the bottom and the back edge here. trick is not to get any folds in them. And I have found if you've got some extreme corners, like for example if you're going to do the fender flares, it helps to maybe have a hair dryer handy just to warm them a little bit. Not hot, just warm. So there's one of my window decals, and these actually are transparent, I don't know, you can see, um, they look pretty darn good, better than I thought they would, so I probably will leave the, the windshield. So I'm going to just finish applying the rest of the decals, nothing terribly exciting, some of them like the top of the bumper here are... Uh, are kind of hard to see, but they do add a little bit. They've got this texture design. Um, so I'm going to use pretty much every single decal on the sheet that they give me, except of course the fender flares, which I painted. So I'll get those all on. There's the body with all the decals on it. Looks really nice. Nobody does a better job on Lexan bodies than Tamiya especially with the addition of some of the hard parts, which we're going to install now on the hard parts, I mean the hard plastic parts. So I painted uh, all the small parts with, uh, to me, a TS-29 semi-flat black, semi-gloss black. And so those are basically ready to go. I'm going to start uh, with this uh, spare tire cover and this grill because I want those to dry a little more. So on the spare tire cover there's a 
there's a Bronco emblem that goes on. And uh, there's also a kicking horse. There's the Ford right there. And there's a kicking horse right here in the middle. Now, Tamaya's done a nice job on this horse, and they've actually flattened out the sticker around the horse. And they've flattened the sticker around the Ford and the and the uh, Bronco. So when you put those on, the stickers aren't glossy. They're actually flat. On the front grille, they give you this Bronco label to go on here. But for the life of me, I mean, you'd have to trim around every single little part to get it on there. Which, which you could do and probably would look okay. It's a lot of work. But looking at a real Bronco, um, I noticed that the letters were shiny black and the grill was the flat black. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush some clear gloss on the letters and uh, leave it at that. And I will go ahead and add the stickers to this. And there's a, there's a little rear brake light and they give you a sticker for that. So I'm going to put the sticker on that, mount this, which gives me a reference point for the top, and then I'll get the decals on. Even with the uh, flattened decals, you can still see the backing paper a little bit on those. Uh, it's not bad, it's acceptable. What I'm going to do is spray some TS-80 clear flat over the whole thing, which will tend to blend those in. So I'll do that and we'll come back and work on the rest of these parts. So there's lots of little plastic parts to attach to the body. This um, anchor point has an angle on it and there's actually an angle molded into the top here. So they, while they'll fit backwards, they're not exactly reversible. I also took a drill bit and drilled out the two holes on here thinking I might use it to tie something down later. The inner part um, just gets a piece of double stick tape. and It's got a recessed area where the tape fits. And then it drops over the pin here. Drops into position, tapes up against the body, and then there's two different sizes of O-rings, and there's two different sizes, well there's three different sizes of O-rings, and a couple different sizes of body clips. So this uses the smaller O-ring and the smaller clip, and the O-ring just fits over the post. and then a clip goes through the hole to hold it in. This should be very strong. The, the molded pieces inside fit really nice. Here we have our two tie-down points mounted. Uh, the next thing to mount is the grill and we'll put the light buckets in it. So I've taken and, and I don't know if you can see it there, but I've taken and put some clear gloss on the Bronco lettering. It actually looks good from here. And then there's uh, an internal uh, light bucket that goes in from the back side. Okay, so the body's going to go in between that. And so before we, before we mount the grill, it wants us to mount the LEDs in the light bucket. So I took their little LED unit um, it, that comes with it. It's got two white headlights and two red tail lights and it's very simple. It's just the lights are on. There's a little switch on it and you plug in the battery the lights go on. I'm going to do a video later where I really light this thing up and put sound in it but for now I'm going to install these Tamiya lights and they just mount in here and there's little clips that mount like this and are held on with a screw to hold the LED in. So I'm going to go ahead and mount the LEDs in this front and then while I'm at it here's the rear end 
and they give me two red LEDs to mount there. Now notice that there's there's two holes so you can mount two LEDs I suppose a turn signal and a brake light. They only give you one. They give you a little plate here that can mount inside and they they have it marked so you can block it off so you could you could cut it and break off a tab to just have one LED. I'm not going to use these because later again I'm going to put two LEDs in it. But for now I'll just mount the LED in here and then I'll have these ready to go for that step. So I'll go ahead and get those mounted. So I've got my LEDs mounted in there. Now the um, grill just fits through these holes in the front and they're backed up by this light fixture which mounts in like that and the instructions show it with this screw on the bottom I don't know if it makes a difference but I'm going to do it like that and then a screw just goes in here to hold it and it captures the, the bumper Oh yeah, that looks really good. At this point everything's fun because it doesn't take much to, to make a real difference. that the nerf bar just fits through the holes like this and it has this bracket here that backs up the back side and the bracket has got a flat spot on one side that goes up towards the top of the body like that now one thing to watch for, there's two different lengths of these little black screws. You see there's a long one and a short one. In this particular spot we're using the long ones. You don't want to mix them up because, uh, well first off they might not hold properly, but second off you'll run out of one or the other. And those just follow the same method to capture the the part in between these two. And you'll probably see this is a common thread the way they, they put these pieces together. There's our, there's our little Nerf bar. That looks good. Next item is door handle. Um, you'll notice that the door handle has a, a longer side and a shorter side and the longer side goes back towards the back and on the rear end it goes down towards the bottom. Same drill as the other ones. There's a piece that drops over here and capture screws that screw it together. The uh, rear lights are held in with double sticky tape. You can see the tape here, I haven't peeled it off yet. And they just stick right in there. Nothing too complicated about that. This stuff is amazingly strong. I'm not real big on taping things, but in this case, it's probably just fine. Okay, and then the spare tire goes on next. The uh, spare tire is held on by the good old-fashioned screw and washer. 
So we'll just put a screw in there and then line up one of the holes. screw it on. All right, we'll get that put on. So one of the final things is to prep the mirrors um, to put those on. And so what you do is earlier they had you save a piece of the Lexan body. You make sure that there's no uh, protective film on it and then you just put the mirror sticker right on there on the on the plastic and then you can just cut it now the way I do this is I just cut it with a knife you don't have to cut all the way through you just score it and then you bend it and it'll just cut right there like that so we'll just go around and basically cut this whole mirror out super easy to do once this is cut out just took off the corners here to it and then make sure it fits inside here and it drops in, it does. Then you want to take a piece of this double sticky tape stick it on the back side and then cut it out really helps to have a good sharp exacto knife blade. And then peel the backing off and slide the mirror in. just slides in and then sticks in there. And then there's a decal that goes on the outside and the mirror is done. So there we go. So that the mirror just mounts in the body here, uses the standard small o-ring and a small body clip to hold it. And then the other thing are these two tow hooks that go in the front. And they may mount down here underneath the bottom. And they use a, a thicker o-ring and a clip. So I'll get those put on. The final touch on the body is the uh, roof rack, which just fits in here and screws up from the bottom. But they also have a, uh, a basket that you can add to the roof rack. And there's a bunch of uh, little clips here that hold, that mount on this, and then screw the basket down. Now I haven't, I painted the roof rack, but I have not painted the basket. So what I'm going to do is assemble the basket. It just assembles like this with the sides and little screws hold it together. And then there's a front plate that mounts in here. So I'm going to assemble it first. Then I'm going to paint it with the semi-flat black. And I'm going to mount these on the rack and paint those with semi-flat black. And then I'll come back and install that on, on 
this and then mount it on the roof. Just as an aside, it uses the longer of the small screws to assemble it, the rack does. On the roof rack, these little clips are mounted on here, and there's a there's a mounting point here and one back here. So this little clip just goes underneath. And then this mounts on top, facing rearward, and the back one faces that way. So I'm going to mount those other two clips. Then I'm going to paint the basket and paint the rack. And then I'll put them together and paint the remaining screw heads. So I'll go ahead and put that together. Well, this rack got painted up real nicely. Looks great. These posts now are pretty good size, so there's a, a large hole in the body, and they just fit through those holes. And then on the inside, an O-ring drops over the top of it. And then one of these big flat washers and a screw. So the O-ring is actually is what is pushing it against the body. So I'll go ahead and screw that down. And just like that, the body is done. Really looks nice. To me, it does a great job on your bodies. And this paint came out beautiful. The hard plastic parts really add to it. So the only thing really left is this little light unit, which to me instructions say to plug these in to the first slots. This thing's got a bunch of slots and some other things. I assume it does other things, but then there's an on-off switch. Now they suggest taping or velcroing it inside the body, and then this goes in the battery clip. I'm not going to mount this because later I'm going to use this truck for a, a demonstration rig for a really awesome sound system. So these just drop over in place. Uh, one of the things that I like to do with these body clips, and these are these are some pretty big uh, body clips, but when they go in here, they they fit real tight and they're hard to grab a hold of. So I like to take a pair of pliers and bend them a little bit. So that the the head is up at a little bit of an angle, which makes it much easier to get my fingers on. So two body clips here and two back here. You need to use a pair of pliers to reach underneath to grab them, but no big problem. So I will uh, put those on and I will come back and we'll do some, uh, some beauty shots of this and finish up this uh, video. Well, there we go. Uh, the Tamiya Ford Bronco. Beautiful, uh, beautiful kit. Looks just fantastic. They do such a nice job on their kits and it was fun to build. Uh, this video, again, was for beginners. So if you haven't built a, an RC vehicle before, that's, uh, that's who I aimed it at. I love this Bronco. I'd love to have a real one, but the Ford dealers are kind of being slimes about them right now, so maybe in the future. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, I've got a model. That's just fine. Uh, it, our steering works great. Uh, we've got nice uh, speed control. And uh, so there we go. The next video that you see this in, I'll be installing a sound system and a light system that will just make it killer. And that'll be the uh, Bayer USM um, 3. So watch for that in the future. It's probably going to be a couple of months. But uh, anyway, that, that's it. Uh, normally my channel does to me a semi trucks, and that's pretty much it. But occasionally I have to build something for myself just because I like it and it's cool. So uh, hey, subscribe. Give me a, a thumbs up. I like those. They, they help me with the uh, YouTube search rankings. And uh, there you go. To me, a Ford Bronco. Great kit. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.